Hello, it's Mocha Product Manager Martin Brennan with a quick Halloween inspired tutorial on power mesh tracking for spooky digital makeup and skin effects. In this tutorial, I'll be using the Mocha Pro 2022 plugin running inside HitFilm Pro, but this technique will also work inside all other supported hosts. PowerMesh is Mocha's flexible subplanar tracker which allows you to capture the organic motion and warp in both planar and non-planar regions. Today we're going to be doing this effect of a creeping zombification of someone's hand. You can download the footage for this hand from the link in the description if you want to follow along. In HitFilm Pro, the first thing we want to do is create a composite shot with our footage, so we right click and choose Composite Shot and choose the detected settings. Next, we apply Mocha Pro 2022 to the layer and launch the UI from the effect controls. If you don't have Mocha Pro installed on your system, you can download a 15 day free trial from our website. You'll want to install the OFX version to support HitFilm. So, what we want to do is get a creeping bleed effect all the way up the arm and then spread over to the palm. In this shot you can see that the wrist arcs backwards first and then the palm spreads out a bit more for the final reveal. So what we're going to do is draw our tracking layer on a frame where everything is stretched out nicely. Because we have low texture detail in the thumb area and there's a bit of high exposure going on at the start, I'm going to start my layer from about frame 80 where the thumb isn't so turned and track forwards with auto. Then later we'll track backwards and modify the track a bit. We'll create a long mask around the pit of the palm down to the wrist and out of the edge of frame. Since this arm turns, we're going to track using a perspective planar track, and then we'll turn on the mesh, which generates automatically. I recommend keeping the default of around a 32 pixel spacing in the mesh size, but then turning on adaptive contrast. We can then generate the mesh again. For mesh tracking, we can generally leave the default smoothness value of around 50, and in most cases I recommend turning on auto smoothness and let Mocha figure it out for you. When we track backwards, as you'll see later, we're going to change that a bit, and I'll explain why then. I'm going to speed up the recording here so you don't have to sit through that part. This looks good, so now we can begin tracking backwards from where we started. I'll keep auto smoothness on for the time being, and we'll stop the track if we start to see any slippage. Here, you can see the thumb area of the mesh is starting to slip. This is because the mesh tracker doesn't have a lot to track with in this area. To fix this, we can go back to frame 80 again, and this time we'll turn off auto smoothness and set the smoothness manually to about 70. A higher smoothness value is basically telling Mocha to give more weight to the planar track than the mesh track. This should help our problem area. Now that this section is looking better, we can continue tracking either with auto or adjusting the smoothness where necessary. We can also edit the individual mesh vertex points, and if I make a keyframe, this change will be interpolated into the mesh tracking instead of just popping on that keyframe. Now as we scrub, we can see a better result. That mesh is no longer bending around the corner, and we're good to go. We can now move over to the insert module and preview how this is going to affect the insert by using one of our inbuilt grid clips. Let's first go to the end frame again and adjust the surface to the area we want to cover. We can always adjust this later as the surface is not keyframed. Next we can go over to the insert clip and select a grid type. 16x16 16 16 is a good place to start. We can rotate the surface using one of the corners and get the rectangle into position and then scale out the edges to cover the area we want to insert to. Then we can scrub the timeline to see the overall movement. Right now it's only doing planar motion, so we need to check the power mesh warp option to turn on subplanar warping. Now you can see the clip warping with the hand. Let's change the blend to overlay in the blend modes so we can preview on the skin. So the insert is contained only to the skin, we can turn on Use All Layers in the mask area, or select a specific layer mat. We'll then soften the edge with an edge width. To do this we'll first turn on Uber Key. 
so the softness happens across all keyframes. And then we can adjust the edge width with a few pixels. Make sure you turn off the Uber key after you use it to avoid keyframing issues later. Now we can see how the mesh and the mat work together on the insert clip. Right, now I'm happy with this, so before I exit back into HitFilm, I'll turn on Motion Blur for a more realistic final insert. The next thing we want to do is work on the insert itself. For this, we'll save and close Mocha and go back to HitFilm. Now comes the fun part. We get to design how the overall effect works for the wrist to palm zombification. There are many effects we can do here, from a simple noise up to a full Photoshop paint. I'm going to show you a basic mock-up using procedural effects inside HitFilm. We'll start by creating a new plane, and then I'll add a fractal noise from HitFilm's effect list. There's a few styles of creepy, veiny looks we could do, such as energy or wisps, but the fluid default is really nice and wormy. We'll do sort of a desaturated blue tint to the noise to make it nice and dead looking. The next one is a bit weird, but we'll add a storm cloud 3D effect and scale up the boiling clouds underneath the fractal noise using an overlay blend. This just adds a subtle movement to the reveal, which makes it a bit more insidious. Really, you can combine anything you like here because the vast majority of the creeping effect will be handled by the next step. I'll now turn these two layers into their own composite shot. This is a necessary step as the raw layer output is always imported into Mocha, so the effect needs to be combined into a composite layer first. We can bring this back into the Mocha project as an insert by importing the HitFilm comp as an insert layer in the Mocha Pro effect. Once back in Mocha, we set the insert clip for the layer to Insert Layer, which reads the insert from the host. Now we can see the veins on the hand. To make the effect creep, we can now animate the mask up the hand and use the existing warp to help drive the motion. We'll go to the start of the clip and scale down the mask so it starts at the wrist. We'll need to make a lot of adjustment keyframes along the way and add more feathering and blending for the skin. We can tweak this softness as we go by holding down the Alt key or Option key if you're on the Mac and dragging the inner and outer edges of the spline as needed. You'll notice this is probably the most laborious part of the work, as the masking here is just as much a storytelling device as it is a compositing effect. I'm not just adding a fade, I'm trying to have it creep slowly and creepily up the wrist into the palm. I recommend using the dope sheet to change the keyframe timing as you go to find a nice ramp up of the effect. Once we're happy with the reveal of the insert, we can go back to HitFilm to start tweaking the look. In the Mocha plugin controls, we can now turn on Render and select Insert Composite to see the combined result. This mode is great when you don't have a lot of blend options in your editor. In this case, we'll use Insert Cutout instead to get the uncomped and warped insert clip by itself, and then use Apply Matte in the Matte section to cut out the effect. We can then throw the original source clip behind the effect layer to comp it together. The reason for doing it this way is it gives you a lot more control of the end result back in HitFilm. Now we can select the Mocha layer and in the layer properties then change the layer to overlay to see the same result we were looking at in Mocha. Because this shot is still way too bright and cheery, I'm going to add a new grade layer and then apply a HitFilm LUT effect and then load a dark and spooky LUT made by our own Ben Brownlee at Boris FX. We'll then also add a subtle default vignette to give it a bit more mood and focus. Now we can render out the final result. With this setup, it's easy to try a lot of different insert effects on the original insert clip. It's a nice way to quickly play around with the results because all your experimentation is fed directly into Mocha and then rendered back to HitFilm. If you have any questions about the techniques shown here today, ask a question in the comments or pop over to the forums at borisfx.com. Come.